Well, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. That was fantastic. I hope you woke up as well. So, so that's pretty good to see all of you. No, it's a, it's a pleasure uh, for me to be here and uh, uh, discuss a little bit about the future. And of course, uh, I think I uh, got a really good introduction from Arpit, but also from, uh, from Sandra, uh, talking about 5G is here now. And uh, that's really what we have to realize. And, and how do we see the implication for the networks? I think that's, that's, that's what we have to really uh, discuss. First, uh, a little bit about my, my, my background. Uh, yes, I'm a wireless guy. I kind of worked a lot with uh, wireless technologies. And uh, back in the late 80s, uh, GSM uh, basically came out of my, my lab at, uh, at Ericsson. So that, that created this, this fantastic um, evolution that we, uh, that we saw. But that was voice only kind of thing. So anyway, uh, after that, I became the CTO for Ericsson. And that I had like 15 years. And that was during the time when we invented 3G, 4G. Those things we actually call mobile broadband because you know this was not voice anymore. We just took it to the next level, uh, realizing that internet was going to change things, and, and of course it really did, and 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 that just created the continued uh, uh, success. But of course we invented a lot of other things like uh, like Bluetooth, Swap, and those things. But um, then of course. Uh, then a little bit later, I, I moved to, uh, to uh, Silicon Valley, still being with, with Ericsson. And uh, then I found out a couple of things. One was really this, the, these, uh, these people working on, on open flow. And uh, that, of course, had a very profound impact. And, and we started to work very close together with NICERA and so on, from, from Ericsson's point of view. <coughs> and, uh, Really, I mean, that, that, that was a fantastic revolution. We had done similar things with, uh, with what we call soft switch in the, in, the, in the circuit switch world, but that wasn't really driving the applications. That was just to, to, uh, to separate the control plane and the, and the, and the data path, so to speak. But, but this was more, more, much more profound. So anyway, um, then I started to, uh, to work with, uh, with, with uh, Sony Mobile. And that was really working a lot together with, uh, with the Android team at, 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 at Google. And that was really open source. Although it was a little bit different, it was one organization creating most of it. But, and they, it was done in a fantastic way by, by bringing all these vendors uh, as, as, uh, as partners. And, and the whole op op uh, open source way of doing it. The way that Andy Rubin drove these things and, and started from scratch, created a new operating system and making it a, a fantastic success. Uh, of course, uh, along with, with, with iPhone, but nevertheless, this was very, very fast. And, and I think that was a tremendous thing to, to really be, uh, be part of that, to see what open source can really create. And uh, now I'm, I'm more working with uh, being advisory on, on, on company boards and so on, uh, still with some big companies, but also with a lot of startups here in the valley. And, uh, and of course, these are, are from very uh, diverse areas because I've been mean, covering both network and, 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 and consumer electronics. So I work with, of course, 5G, IoT, cloud uh, technology, but also with, with more things coming, coming from the end user perspective like AI and VR. AR and so on. So let's talk a little bit about um, this thing about, because this is all about, in my world, it's all, it's, it's all about disruption and innovation. And, and that's, that's, that's really, this is not the end of it. I think we are having some very interesting journey ahead of us. Uh, if you look at the mobile computing, this is where you can see these, these generations, starting with, with like, you know, text and voice. Uh, really moving into touch-based phones. By the way, they came long before iPhone, uh, although they had a pen. So I think that was a big thing that, that, that changed the world with getting rid of the pen. But actually, when we invented 3G, of course, we had to have some, some much, much more uh, advanced phones. So they were, they were like uh, touch-based phones. But what really happened then with, with um, having uh, smartphones, very advanced smartphones, like Android and iPhone, definitely was that all this thing about uh, being really connected to internet and having all this video, that kind of uh, exploded. Because in the previous days, we didn't really have a full browser and things. So, so, so that, 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 that changed it. And uh, now, of course, we have all seen uh, that evolution going on for the last 10 years. Looking ahead, though, I mean, uh, things like AR and VR will have a very large impact on, on uh, the whole evolution from the uh, 
from the end user uh, perspective. If we look at the, the network, you know, all these Gs, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, basically where I have spent a lot of my uh, time, I mean, we have to realize that, that um, this, uh, this evolution we have seen is basically six order of magnitude uh, of, of data rate increase during, uh, during the years. So it started like 2G was basically like 10 kilobits per second, and now we talk about 5G, which is like 10 gigabits. So that's, that's uh, six orders of, of, of magnitude. And of course, that has a fantastic large impact on what, what, what you can do and with, with the things we can see on the, on the left-hand side, what going from, from voice to web to, 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 to video and now further to, to, uh, to new things. Uh, but it's also very important to, to realize that the, at the same time there has been a very strong evolution on the, on the network side. I think 2G kind of just built on the circus switch world. However, what it really did was to create a global mobile world and, and, and with roaming and all of these things. So, so that was a pretty big step in itself to, to really create all of that. And uh, of course, uh, then merging like the internet world and the, and the mobile world into uh, 3G, 4G using TCP IP, that, that definitely helped ev everything to align these two worlds. And of course, now we have seen the last couple of years that SDN and FE is having a profound impact. Moving to, to 5G, of course, that's like uh, John Donovan mentioned yesterday, that really means that, that this is the first time that you really can have a modern uh, architecture and, and network architecture when you are deploying a new radio technology, which is, has not been the case in the past. It's always been like an evolution. So this is really interesting. We can create all of these things that we talked about, and we can get rid of some uh, of the, the old stuff that we don't have to, to, uh, to, uh, to carry any longer. <clears throat> However, we also have to realize that uh, all these things about 5G also put a lot of things or network in, uh, implications that we heard a little bit about yesterday and this morning as well. So <clears throat> we have to realize it, it will be quite a different journey going, uh, going ahead. So what's really the, uh, the next big thing? Well, I would say it's distributed cloud. <clears throat> I think there are many words for this that people use very different words to, to really explain what it is. And, uh, but I think it's, it's self-explanatory if you use the word distributed cloud. So basically, of course, I will then try to talk a little bit about what are the trends that are uh, leading up to this uh, distributed cloud. Things like 5G, IoT, AI, VR, AR. So I will, I will spend a little bit of time on each, each one of those. I think 5G we just heard. I mean, if you look at 5G, it is happening now. It's, it's, uh, it's just around the corner. Uh, and this is a new network. It's new radio. And of course, there are, it's a, it's a, you know, from the application point of view, it's going to be different. So on a radio perspective, it's like 10 times higher data rates. It's 10 times lower data latency. So basically, we talk about more than 10 gigabits per second. We talk about less than one millisecond. So uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can, you can do with these things. Uh, there are some challenges on the radio side because <clears throat> in order to, to uh, generate all of these uh, data rates, of course, it's also important to go up to higher, higher frequency bands, which has its own challenges. But nevertheless, I think that is, that is really happening. On the, on the network side, again, this is basically building on open source. We don't have to carry all the, all the old stuff around. We can really think about virtualization and cloud in a, in a, in, in a very uh, creative way. And, and, uh, and that um, uh, is uh, driving this whole new world. On the application side, I think basically this is not only mobile any longer. This is going beyond mobile. This will be, that will be fixed wireless because anyway, you, fiber is very expensive if you, if you really want to do uh, fixed networks and, 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 and deploy residential broadband to the homes outside cities or large cities that is then <clears throat> wireless is, is much more attractive. And that is big, it's really becoming obvious. So, so, so that, that's gonna have an, a very important impact. But there is also these verticals that many people have talked about that is definitely for, for enterprise that's gonna drive things. And I will touch upon some, some of them. But basically, of course, 5, 5G is gonna have a major impact on, 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 the, 
on the distributed automated network. So another thing is IoT, and uh, <clears throat> well, it may be hard to see all the numbers, but of course we are, this is like 50, 50 billion devices pretty soon, and uh, of course uh, they're gonna generate traffic, and some of them are, are just not gonna, re you know, some of these devices are actually more, more like sensors and so on, and they are very, very many of them, and they're gonna be all over the place, gonna re require a lot of signaling, but not, not necessarily so, so, so many bytes. But nevertheless, you can see that uh, even on the, on the bytes perspective, it is actually uh, driving up traffic, although uh, the main traffic is still coming, coming from other sources like, uh, like, uh, like video. Now, uh, IoT um, is a buzzword. Uh, it's being used for, 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 uh, for many, many different things. Some of the things around IoT are, of course, more like indoor applications only. But it's also important that, uh, to realize that for, uh, that for wide area outdoor applications, there is also a big need for, for, uh, for IoT. So uh, then uh, there are some, some new technologies being uh, developed by the standardization organization, like uh, 3GPP has launched this new uh, narrowband LTE technology. And what that really means is low power wide area. So you can have extremely low power, like, like a, uh, devices can, can, can be out there for, for 10 years, basically until you forget about them, right? So, so, so then you, you just let, let, uh, let them be there and then, then, then you come with something else. And this is for consumer devices, of course, like, like, uh, like wearables, but, but also for a lot of uh, enterprise IoT sensors being done for, for asset tracking, smart cities, or retail. We heard a lot about retail in, in the last presentation, and, and different kinds of transportation and so on. So, of course, this is um, definitely going to change and it's going to drive the, uh, the future when it comes to a number of devices out there in the, in the world. This is low speed. Uh, technology, but again, it, it does require a lot of signaling, so it, it does require that you have more distributed network to really take care of all of these signaling. You don't want to have everything up, up, uh, uploaded because there's so many devices out there. Then um, I think uh, VR, AR, this slide is just kind of highlighting the fact that this is going to have a profound impact. Uh, of course, these, these numbers are, are pretty big, and uh, I don't know exactly how fast it's, it's going to take. Normally things, you know, um, happen a little bit slower than you think, but once they come, it goes very, very fast. So very, actually, I think we're definitely going to see numbers like, like, uh, like this out there. And uh, VR is a little bit smaller than AR on this chart here, but uh, of course, we, if you can see it, just looking at from the uh, device point of view, it's, 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 it's pretty big. And it's, it, and it's happening already, because we have really advanced VR devices out there on the market already now. And, and of course, we can see that the implication of that is, is, is starting to happen. Now, in this, um, we have to realize that <coughs> VR, AR is quite different from uh, ordinary video. Because video uh, distribution, when you do that, like with using CDN technology and, and so on, I mean, real time is not so important. You can have a little bit of, of, uh, of latency. It doesn't really matter so much. Uh, but for these applications, it does. So you, it's very important to have low latency. For instance, VR, if you have, if you have glasses and you, and, I mean, the way it's supposed to be when you have three, uh, 360 is if you move your head, you should really follow, right? Because otherwise you get, you get dizzy. So you have to get a new scene within a couple of milliseconds. So, so, so that's pretty hard uh, latency restrictions. On, on AR, it's similar. You really are looking at the virtual world and the real world at the same time. And, 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 and those, those have to be kind of, kind of synchronized. If you have too much delay, you have, you, have a, you have a similar problem. So, I mean, when you're just watching video, you are kind of, you're kind of doing it w w without having to worry about latency, but these applications are really talking about very low latency. So, so it's, it's uh, really completely different, and it's gonna drive this whole thing about uh, distributed cloud, of course. So if you look a little bit about AI <coughs> as well, and, and come back to a little bit VR, AR, but of course, AI is, is, kind, of, is kind of similar. Uh, as, as, as humans, we always expect very fast response. 
and, uh, and, and I mean, going to computers, that might, might be even more so, like, we, like uh, I think uh, Amin from Google mentioned yesterday. So, of course, this is not restricted just to, just to uh, AI, but nevertheless, if you talk about AI and, and, and all these applications that are related to, to, to humans, it does require low, uh, low latency. That goes, for, that goes for voice interfaces. It goes for things like, like face recognition. You don't really want to be, be kind of bothered about, about these, these, these delays. And uh, of course, for things like uh, autonomous driving is, is definitely profound. And uh, that's also what Sandra talked about. I mean, she talked about the connected car and some of those applications. But you know, if you go to uh, autonomous driving, it's, it's, uh, it's, even, it's even more than that. Uh, and uh, so all of these things basically means that we are talking about a, a new world with, with very different requirements. And uh, I think definitely you can, you can say that uh, the, uh, uh, the way to look upon this is that the network has to, has to change uh, quite, quite much. Now, um, on the VR, AR side, of course, I think I already mentioned the, this uh, seasick problem that, that you, you can experience if you don't have uh, very low, I mean, you really need very low latency for that. And, and we can see, and there's a lot of experience from, from, from PlayStation and Oculus and so on. Uh, and so that really, um, of course, if you have, if you just have it in the, in the spectacles, that's one thing, but, but go into online, then it puts re these requirements uh, to the networks instead. Uh, and again, uh, augmented reality is, uh, is very similar. So we talk about high speed, low latency, and of course automated. So uh, this, this has to be very intelligent, but definitely the network has to handle, handle low latency and of course high speed. I think 5G is then of course the number one vehicle for that. But if the network cannot uh, follow, follow through and do the same thing, then, then it, you know, it doesn't really help. So, so um, I think definitely it's becoming very obvious that we have to focus on getting the distributed cloud out there. And uh, this is, uh, I guess, starting with, with things like the central office and we're also following through with the, with the base station. So basically we can, we can do it at the edge People call it different things, of course. I mean, mobile edge computing, multi-axis multi edge computing, and, and, there are, uh, and I think Sandra had a little bit different wording as well. But, but, but these things are, are really driving, driving it and, and from the capacity and latency uh, point of view. I mean, we have to realize that <coughs> uh, this, has, this has been uh, the kind of uh, way of working for, uh, for all mobile, mobile networks. And uh, that when you do this thing on, on, on a mobile network, things, when it comes to latency, when it comes to direct access, it requires so much uh, higher, higher response time, and a fast, or shorter response time, you should say. So, of course, that is uh, things that we will continue to, uh, to also see. And it's really great to see that uh, open networks are now being embraced by the, uh, by the telecom world. I think that is fantastic. It takes a little while, you know, everything takes a while. <clears throat> like we heard from, from Martin uh, yesterday morning. He was a little bit embarrassed that it took so long time, but it does, you know. I mean, you have to, be, you have to realize that. And, and, and of course, now we can see that the traditional standardization forums, such as 3GPP and so on, are, uh, of course, uh, working very close together with, with the open network. Fora. So I think that's, that's, that's really the way to, to create the future. And I think just to have a closer relation, continue to have even, even better uh, relation. And then, of course, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the harmonization between different open network forums could also be, be very important. It's been a little bit fragmented, but to speed up it, and, and it's better to, to really harmonize. And then uh, I think, of course, we, have, we, we all have to realize that it's good to focus on the end-to-end -end ap application. Again, I mean, Martin talked about that yesterday morning, that, that to be general is a little bit tough sometimes. You, you have to focus. And, and, and I think that's, that's also very good advice for, for, for doing things for the next generation. So uh, with that, uh, I think I have uh, tried to, to, uh, to give this, uh, this message about the, 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 the distributed cloud. So, 
I'm, uh, I'm happy to take in. All right, guys, okay. please, like, round of applause. Thank uh, you. If you don't mind staying here, I have a couple of questions before we open it okay. up. Uh, you know, you said it takes a while, and that's one thing I know Silicon Valley does not have, which is patience, <laughs> right? No, right. Um, and a lot of people here in the audience, I'm sure some of them may not even be born when 2G or 3G was there, right? So what, what advice do you have for them? Uh, what should they do? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, what should you do? <clears throat> of course, how, 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 how to be uh, successful, I would say still, is just to be first. You know, you have to innovate and be first. So then you have, uh, you know, if, if you don't do that, then of, then of course uh, it, it's very hard to really be very, very successful. That has been the motto I have been working with all these, all these years. You have to be first, you have to innovate, you have to be first. And of course, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you think, and that's, that's the thing. You have to be a little bit, uh, you have to be a little bit uh, perseverance kind of, kind of with those things, because networks takes, takes a while. It's so, it's so big. Uh, of course, so, so that's, uh, that's, that's one thing. Another thing, of course, you have to, uh, you, you know, I mean, it's not, how, how do you do this? You cannot just say you're going to innovate and, and be first, because sometimes you're actually too early also if you, if the technology is not ready or the market is not early, you, you, are, you are too early. So. But of course, also it's very important that you, are, that you have to be best. You really have to make sure that you pick your, pick your area and uh, pick your subject and try to work in that and, 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 and learn it and be best. Because if you are best, you can, you know, it's really hard to, to object to what you are, to what you're doing. So I don't know. I mean, it's very, it's very hard to give advice, <laughs> but I mean, you know, these, these, these are some of the things. Love that it. No, we love it. So we have questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. Michael. Hi, Michael Howard from IHS uh, Market. And when we met before, it was in phonetics uh, when you were at Ericsson. But uh, Dr. Yan, I have this question. Uh, every time I hear the 5G uh, edge computing, high bandwidth, millimeter wave, uh, n it seems to me it requires deep fiber, uh, fiberization out everywhere, really. And but nobody talks about it at these conferences. Maybe they talk about it at optical conferences. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I don't go to those anymore. But what do you think about that? Is it, it do you ju does the industry just expect that fiber is going to be out there close enough that the short uh, distance yeah. of millimeter wave will yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right, of course. <clears throat> I mean, going to millimeter wave, these, these frequency bands about 20 gigahertz, definitely uh, the, the uh, range of the uh, radio, you know, the coverage of, of the radio will be much smaller. So, so you need much more base stations, actually. And they have to be cheap and small, and, and lots of them, or at least many of them. And then, of course, fiber is the right way to really connect them. Yeah, I would say so, absolutely. So that will be fiber, maybe not fiber to the home, but fiber to the hub or whatever you want to call it, fiber to the base station, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, Farid Singh from Telefonica. Um, your insight about uh, distributed clouds. Um, our customers utilize services um, and their experiences on those services are you know, with Google and Facebook. And obviously those are OTT players. So the question to you is, do you not think it's time for the OTT players um, to come to the party um, and work with telco operators on these distributed um, clouds um, in, let's say, the central offices? <coughs> and, and this does mean that the OTT players have to give up a piece of the pie, which, uh, I mean, they did a really good job in the last 10 years. But to support all of this, I mean, for virtual reality, you know, virtual reality players have to uh, build an, um, build their architecture which supports distributed cloud, and that means that they have to give a piece of the pie to telco. So do you not think that now it's time for them to kind of say, let's work together? <clears throat> well, of course, I mean, I should not answer on, on, their, on their behalf, but definitely I think we, we see, I mean, I think it was really good to see now the, um, how, how AT&T are, are presenting the way forward for the, for the telco industry and, and a lot of cooperation around that. At the same time, we also could see Google have very strong plans for what, what they are planning to do on the, on the public cloud. You know, this is Silicon Valley and of course, people drive their own agenda. So 
it's not that simple all the time to just uh, bring people to the party. But I mean, you have to ask them, right? I, I cannot answer on their behalf, but it's, it might not be so easy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Perfect answer from, from the techie. <laughs> All right. Thank you okay. very much. Very good. Thank you very Excellent. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.